However, this baby boy refused to drink milk. No human milk, no cow's milk for him. Later, an adult-like structure appeared on the ground, and the baby boy would nurse on the milk produced from the earth. That was how the country got the name Udiana, a Sanskrit term meaning earth milk. No ordinary cow's milk, mind you, but earth's milk, first the name earth milk kingdom, quite a legend. A Chipita Kashrama na hilt from earth milk kingdom. Speaking of the term Shramana, since its Chinese transliteration is Shaman, Sando. Some Jama masters poorly versed in the lecturing of sutras would explain it like this Sand, river sand, sand door. A door made of river sand, and this monk goes in and out of that door, thus Shaman, sand door. That is wrong. Shramanara is sans a Sanskrit term translated into Chinese means diligently cultivated precepts, samadhi, and wisdom. Putting an end to greed, hatred, and ignorance, the phrase has the same meaning as shramana, diligently cultivating precepts, samadhi, and wisdom. Do not be lazy. Do not think getting more sleep does you good. It might feel natural for your physical body to sleep more, but it is unnatural for your Dharma body. So diligently cultivate precepts, samadhi and wisdom, and put an end to greed, hatred, and ignorance. Shikshananda, Shikshananda, also Sanskrit, translated into Chinese, means study with delight. This shramana was never lazy and was much delighted in learning the Buddha drama, learning the Suragama Mantra, the Great Compassion Mantra, and all the areas of Buddhist studies. It gave him great joy, thus his name, Shikshananda. Translated, to translate is to render the Sanskrit texts into Chinese. It refers to an exchange, exchanging the identical texts in Sanskrit for Chinese. The Chinese word for to translate is Yi. During the Zhou dynasty in China, an office was created to oversee language, languages used in the four directions of the land. The official installed in the north was called Yi, and this word has since come to mean to translate. That was fifth is transmission and translators. Six, discerning and explaining the meaning of the text. Six, discerning and explaining the meanings of the text. To discern is to distinguish and to explain is to elucidate. Meanings of the text refers to meanings of the sutra text proper. Sutra of the Past Vows of Earth Star Bodhisattva Spiritual Penetrations in the Palace of the Jayashimsha Heaven Chapter 1 Commentary This is the start of the Sutra text Jayashimsha Heaven A Sanskrit for the Heaven of 33 this is not the 33rd layer of heaven from the bottom up. It is in the middle with eight heavens in the east, eight heavens in the west, eight heavens in the south, and eight heavens in the north. Four times it makes 32. 32 heavens surround the 33rd heaven in the center, making this heaven the heaven of 33. The Lord of the Heaven of 33 is Chakra. Chakra is a god which is a Dharma protector in Buddhist terms. The Lord Indra in the Amitabha Sutra, Amitabha Sutra is Chakra the god. Namo Yintuolaye in the Suragama Mantra also refers to Chakra the god. So the heavenly ruler he is merely a Dharma protector according to Buddhism, 
Not only does he not rule, but he does not even have a seat. He stands by the door. This heavenly ruler is the omnipotent God in most people's minds. Right, he is omnipotent. He can manage things in the heavens and in the human realm. However, he is not too different from human beings, because he still wants sex, food, and sleep. His desires are lighter than humans, though. Human beings are extremely hungry after going without food for a few days, uncomfortable and sleepless, without sex for a few days, and lethargic. Without sleep for a few days, Lord Chakra, however, can fast for one hundred days, two hundred days, three hundred days, or even a year without problems. He can also abstain for sleep or sex for a year without problems. Nevertheless, he has got not let go of his desire. Beings in the Chaturashram heaven live for one thousand years. Of which one day is equivalent to one hundred human years. Think about it. How much longer is his one thousand years in human years? The Chandra Shumsha heaven is eighty thousand jojanas in size. Its city walls are made of seven gems. Just the city mode itself is sixty thousand jojanas in size. The city of the Chandra Shumsha god is called. The city of fine views. His palace is constructed with the most valuable gems. This is why he refuses to leave after becoming reborn there as the heavenly lord. All the buildings all around are constructed with gems. No wonder his desire refuses to quit. It's such a beautiful place with such beautiful palaces. He is content just enjoying his heavenly blessings there. And considers the place most delightful. He even tells all beings to be reborn in his kingdom. He welcomes anyone who would like to come to his world, a joyous world. He thinks he is being generous by welcoming people to come and stay. He does not does not realize, however, that he cannot end his own birth and death. Because he is greedy for and attached to this kind of happiness, having said all this, how did he become a god? Did he get promoted from an earthly god to a heavenly god? Every household in Katun makes offerings to an earth lord. Did he get promoted from an earth lord to a heavenly lord, or from an earth lord to a human lord, then a heavenly lord? No. Then how did he become、uh, the heavenly lord? During the time of Kasyapa Buddha, this heavenly lord was a woman. Do not think he is any big deal. Lord God was a woman before. This woman set out to build a temple for Kasyapa Buddha. The circumstances that led to this resolve were that she saw a dilapidated temple with no roof or ceiling. The Buddha image in the temple was losing its gold guarding from the wind and rain that came through. She was saddened by this and said, "Gee, the Buddha image is dirty to begin with. Now it's wind blown and rained on. How embarrassing!" She made it her goal to rebuild this temple since she did not have any money. She asked her friends and relatives, "I want to rebuild a temple, but I am penniless. Could you all help me get more of your relatives and friends together so we can do charity and repair this temple?" Her friends and relatives agreed. Okay, let us cooperate and build a temple. Thirty-three people were found. She is the founder, while there were thirty-two others, mostly women too. So. Unverifiable in history. Even if they were men, they were very few. Men probably thought they were too great to build temples, so they let the women do it. In any case, these thirty-three women finished rebuilding this temple. 
plus a jeweled steel bar at that. Each person donated a little money and all their effort in building this temple and steel bar. At the end of these 33 people's lives, they were reborn in their heavens. Each person has one layer of heaven, so there are 33 layers for 33 people at this heaven. The center of these heavens is the Chajashim Shalot Chakra. This is the origin of the Chajashim Sha heaven. What does heaven mean? It does not mean anything. If it did, it would not be called heaven. Why? Heaven is spontaneous by definition. The karma of this, uh, these 33 individuals created these heavens. Without these 33 individuals, there would not be the Chajashim Shah heaven. That is why I say it does not mean anything. The palaces here are the best and most beautiful models, like some of those Chinese imperial palaces. But these heavenly palaces are even more beautiful and wonderful. Spiritual penetrations. The spirit is also known as the heaven's mind. Penetrations is the type of wisdom. Penetrations are unhindered and spirits are beyond the magical and the mystical. There are six kinds of spiritual penetrations. All of these six are one and the same too. Furthermore, there could be nothing whatsoever because there was no spiritual penetration to begin with or there was always spiritual penetrations. How can we say there was no spiritual penetration and there always was spiritual penetration? This is quite a terrific explanation. Let us first explain the six spiritual penetrations individually. Originally, there was spiritual penetration and no spiritual penetration. Originally, there was one type of spiritual penetration and there was no spiritual penetration at all. The six spiritual penetrations are the penetration of the heavenly eye, the penetration of the heavenly ear, the penetration of knowing others' thoughts, the penetration of knowing past lives, the penetration of traveling freely, and the penetration of being free of our flows. The penetration of traveling freely is also called the penetration of spiritual states and the penetration of wishes fulfilled. Speaking of the penetration of the heavenly eye, we are all pupil, but we are different. How are we different? Some people can observe the chichi leucosum as if it were an apple in the palm of their hand. Venerable Aniruddha had the penetration of the heavenly eye. He was foremost in the heavenly eye, the penetration of the heavenly ear. Someone with this penetration can hear all the sounds throughout the human realm, the heavens and all of Trichiliocosum, the penetration of others' thoughts. Someone with this penetration knows what you are thinking before you articulate it. The penetration of knowing past lives. Someone with this penetration knows everything you did in your past lives, both good and bad. The penetration of spiritual states. The spiritual here is what you mentioned earlier, a kind of inconceivable state. The spiritual and the wanderers are somewhat similar. So sometimes we use them together as one phrase to mean that they are unfathomably spiritual and wanderers, an incredible state. Penetrations are, are unimpeded, blockages clear up. For instance, walls are obstructed but puncture a hole in it, and it is penetrated. Our ignorance obstructs the light of our inherent nature. If you can use your wisdom sword to pierce through, that would be penetration. The penetration of no outflow. Why do we human beings not become Buddhas? It is because of our outflows. Why do we human beings not become Bodhisattvas? It is also because of these outflows. These outflows leak into the triple realm, the desire realm, the form realm, and the formless realm. Not only do 
and flows lead into the triple realm, but the nine realms too. What are the nine realms? The realms of the Bodhisattvas, sound healers, those who enlighten to conditions, gods, humans, asuras, hell beings, hungry ghosts, and animals. The reason that the beings in these nine realms do not become Buddhas is because of their outflows. They would be Buddhas if they do not have any outflows. Where do these outflows come from? Ignorance. If you can shatter ignorance, then there would be no outflows. With ignorance not shattered, you will leak until you have nothing left. Very few people have the penetration of no outflows. Without outflows, you become liberated from the cycle of birth and death. The reason that you cannot become liberated from birth and death is because you have outflows. Having outflows is similar to a leaking bottle. Fill it with water and it leaks. Fill it with more water and it cannot preserve it. And outflows and you would have the penetration of no outflow. Originally, we do not have any spiritual penetrations means that we did not have any spiritual penetrations when we were ordinary people. At the level of the sages of fruition, we have always had spiritual penetrations. Ordinary people do not have spiritual penetrations while sages do. Do sages get their spiritual penetrations from the outside? No, we have always had them. Did ordinary people lose their spiritual penetrations so that they do not have them now? No, they are in their inherent nature, but they did not notice them and discover them. They think they're not there and consider they were always without spiritual penetrations. It is not important whether we have spiritual penetrations. Do not think having spiritual penetrations is equivalent to enlightenment or a hardship. Far from it. Do not be so easily satisfied. Getting just a um, smith get of gold and you think, Oh, I struck it rich this time. Other people with millions and millions of ounces in the savings do not even think about it. It is as if it does not exist for these millionaires. So what is the big deal with your little with, with your one little ounce? Do not be content with little. One of the states of the two vehicles is that they stop in mid course, being content with very little. This is not a Mahayana Bodhisattva sensibility. If you think you are so great because of your spiritual penetrations, then you think too small. You are still attached and satisfied. A chapter is from a classification. Sutra. Thus I have heard at one time the Buddha was in the Charyashimsha heaven speaking drama for his mother. Commentary. Thus I have heard the Vara Sutra, the Earth Star Sutra, and the Drama Flower Sutra are all starting to be lectured here. So, first I have heard it said three times. First is the term that the drama thus spoken is credible. The drama that is not thus is not credible. This drama here is the drama that is thus. Thus is also a term for a seal, a seal of approval. This is the version cannot be altered. Thus I have heard is one of the answers the Buddha gave to answer one of Ananda's four questions. Before Shakyamuni Buddha entered Nirvana, Ananda cried his heart out, forgetting everything. Venerable Aniruddha did not have the flesh eye, only the heavenly eye, but he was especially calm and calm. He told Ananda to ask the Buddha four questions. One, what words should be used in the beginning of each sutra after the sutras have been compiled to show that it is representative of the Buddhist canon? 2. When the Buddha was in the world, the, Buddh the Buddha's disciples lived with him. After the Buddha enters Nirvana, 
with whom should we live? 3. When the Buddha was in the world, the Buddha was our teacher. After the Buddha enters Nirvana, which venerable one should be our teacher? 4. How should we treat evil-natured pictures? The Buddha responded at that time. 1. Use the four words thus I have heard before every sutra. 2. Abide in the four types of mindfulness. The four types of mindfulness are about the body, feelings, the mind, and the dharma. Contemplate the body as impure. Contemplate feelings as suffering. Contemplate the mind as impermanent. And contemplate the dharma as without a self. These are the four types of mindfulness. 3. When the Buddha was in the world, the Buddha was our teacher. After the Buddha enters Nirvana, we take the Pratimoksa as our teacher. This is the master for all bhikshus and bhikshunis. 4. Give evil-natured bhikshus the silent treatment and ignore them. Thus I have heard is to end the multitude of doubts. When the sutras were being compiled, everyone developed three questions immediately. These questions were raised when Ananda joined the sutra compilations before which he certified to the fourth level of Ahatshri. No one opened the door for him and he entered the sutra compilation, compilation place through the crack in the door. Although all the other participants who joined the compilation of the sutras had certified to Ahatshri, their memory was worse than Ananda. Ananda was a provisional manifestation in that life. He was the attendant to all the Buddhas in the past. When Shakyamuni Buddha became a Buddha, he was born. He became Shakyamuni Buddha's attendant. He was being prepared for compiling sutras.